Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. It's Friday and we have our stories of hope. I'm so excited to introduce you to our first guest, Jody Ann Law. She's a native from Australia, and she is a qualified cardiac nurse, and she now lives in Manchester, England. She consults all over the world as a transformational energy medicine practitioner and is a speaker on empowering people to take control of their health, understand their body, and connect their, with their intuition to transform their lives. Her signature program entitled Radiant Health, Harnessing the Power to Heal Yourself, has helped many people on their healing journey. She also runs workshops and retreats with much of her work done online, and she's with us right now. Welcome to the show today, Jody Ann Law. Thank you, Cornelia. Lovely to be here. Nice to have you. So right away, I'm so attracted to, you know, resonating so much with what it is that you're here to talk to us about and that we have the power to heal ourselves. And you um, certainly have some practical ways on what it is that we can do right now. But I'm sure there is a, a story that led you to all of this. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, from adversity comes an amazing comes amazing things, and exactly that. My program is part of my life. So, about eleven years ago, I was in a situation that was really not very healthy. I was in a, an emotionally abusive relationship, and I'd been in it for twenty years, um, and had the actual courage to leave. But my children were only really young at the time; they were only five and seven. But and I like none of it was planned. It was one of those things that if I didn't get out now, I, I just left. Um, but then I obviously had to heal myself and deal with leaving my children behind. Because let's face it, you know, as a parent, no mother does that if they're sound in themselves. So it was a massive um, healing journey then. And my introduction was to yoga. Actually, that was probably that was the the first thing. Not realizing it was from a health point of view, but not realizing the, the enormity of the fact that it was a it's a healing modality, and um, that transformed so much. And in that time, apart from the first two weeks of yoga, I was in tears the whole time, realizing that okay, there must be something more to this. And then I did a uh, teacher training program. And then three months after starting that, I um, was introduced to energy psychology. So for two, basically two, 18 months to two years, I, I was on steroids learning about myself on an energetic level and allowing myself to actually feel, giving myself permission to feel emotions and what that was all about. Because emotions and energy is, it's energy is the language of emotions of your subconscious. And I didn't know that before then. So once I under, started understanding that, and then understanding myself on an energetic level, my whole life just completely transformed. So, um, so where do and then, and then, and then my life whole whole life has transformed since. I just have kept growing as I've kept working on me because is that fine line of um, you know the idea with energy. If, if you've got a graph, and this is where I am now in that little bottom corner, and you want to get to that exponential line, it's it's not a straight road even when you start to understand energy it's that up and down and up and down and up and down and uh, but the more you're in it and the more work you do on yourself starting to understand yourself internally and shutting out that outside noise then you do you are there quicker and your ups and downs aren't as severe so life becomes pretty good actually fantastic and I'd say now this is 11 years on when I've gone through so many more things and so many modalities 
modalities that um, have helped me continue to transform because I also um, then, you know, five years in, I'm, I'm divorced and everything. And then my ex-husband is um, English and the kids were living with him. So they decided to come to the UK, didn't they? So I came kicking and screaming a couple of years later because I had issues with my visa. And I was still quite reactive and angry at that stage. But again, you continue doing the work. And I really am a different person now because for the last two and a half years, I've actually had my daughter living with me. So I have had the, my children in my life the whole time. But now I feel like I am actually a mum that I had sort of set out to be initially. And the things I've learned along the way are really the whole energy psychology, the, the Eden Energy Medicine is another modality I've done since I've been in the UK. And that has given me that whole holistic approach to everything, to be able to do the physical and the mental side of things and really sort of seal it off. So all the things I've learned on my journey, um, to put it into a program to help others so that they can have that Start awareness is the thing. Like, what is happening? What What are the triggers? What are my triggers? What are What do I believe? What are my emotions? What are my what stories? Am I telling myself? So, so the awareness is part of it, and then it's all about okay, where do I want my life to be, and how do I change that? So, it is about changing habits at an energetic level, and I've also spent thirty years in the health system as a as a cardiac nurse, and and burnout like. I've been out of that for about 18 months now, but it, but I was completely burned out. But in a system like that, my and, and knowing more about energy medicine as well, the more I got to know about that, it, my ideals were clashing. My soul was dying and my, my physical body was starting to show me signs that I needed to get out basically. And my last 12 months in there, I wasn't, I wasn't so well physically. So I just, but it's trust. It was about trust and and just opening up to that inner inner voice and intuition to to now's the time to move on and and start all that knowledge that I gained from why there are alternative methods from those alternative methods. Um, all that knowledge I gained it, it's it's teach people and I have done it part time for for a number of years. Now it's just my full time um, thing that I do and I just love it because it's. When once people understand that it comes from within, not from without, the transformations are just so unbelievable to watch. And the thing with it all is some of the things to do, or most of the things to do, all of the things to do, what am I talking about, are so simple and practical. It's just that people don't know that they can, that they're there to do. So showing them the exercises, all of it is about empowering people to start to understand their own energies. It's not me healing them, it's me introducing them to their intuition so they can improve their lives from within. And that is what happens. So I just, I just love it. I don't know what else to say about it really, other than it is really transformational. And, yeah. uh, and, and if people want to know, I'm, I can give you all the information that you want to know. It's just, it's great. Yeah. I, you know, I was writing down as you were talking, uh, when, when you left or when you, when you left your marriage and you were so lost at the time, Completely. Um, uh, feeling like, okay, you, you, like you said, uh, a, a, a sane mother, or should we say a healed mother wouldn't necessarily do that, but you didn't have the emotional capacity to mm -hmm. be there for your children because you needed to be there for your inner child that was really crying out for her own mothering, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, so healing that inner child and then to be able to be emotionally available then later on for your children after you got your emotional needs met, which, which was really huge. And the yoga, the yoga is so, you know, good and, you know, so practical, uh, being able to be with your body, being able to be with what is. So it's, it's, it's so wonderful. What I love about everything that you're talking about and that I hear you saying to inspire the audience is that everyone has the capacity to take the reins on their healing and heal themselves. That we 100%. have the talent. With it, we have modalities. There's plenty of modalities, and yeah. there's plenty of modalities that 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 you can choose and find the ones that resonate with you. Also, Absolutely. Also, that you can claim your authentic power. 
Absolutely. And that is exactly it. There's no one size fits all. It's it's try. What I suggest is is try. Try something. If that doesn't resonate, there will, absolutely will be something out there because it's just about you tapping into you and, and finding your inner voice. And you're absolutely right. Uh, it was totally inner child stuff. Um, and because you don't, you know, my relationship with my ex-husband was like that from the start. And you don't yeah. meet people like, like that if you're feeling good about yourself. Totally. So it, 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 it wasn't anything new. It's just that I came to that realisation it was time for me to do something about it. And because I did, my children have seen such seen me as, as someone that they're, they're proud of and they look up to. And, you know, you do the doing. You don't have to tell them. They can see it. And yeah, and I think that's that's also another really a wonderful way for us to be the example for others. Absolutely. So when, when we heal, we give other people permission to shine, to heal, right? Yeah. It's, it's that. And so that your children are healing now uh, because of the work that you've done and what you're showing them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've got, I honestly, I've got a fantastic relationship with both of them. And that, you know, it isn't, there's no way it's a conventional mother child relationship, but they're in their late teens now. And I just, I love it. It's, it's, it, you know, and for me at the time, it was very much a case of I had to trust that they came down on this earth for their own journey. Mm. And very much a case of I needed to let go while they were very young still, but, and trust that they chose me as their parent as well for, for whatever learnings that I was to give them. And, so, you know, 11 years later, yeah, I, I feel as though I have I have got some really lovely children out of it too, and I really like them and love yeah. them. Yeah, and, a and great they thing probably to feel the same way about you, but while you were talking, you know, before you even said that they chose you as their mother, I was going to say, uh, you know, they signed up for this too. And exactly. So, you know, you had to have the courage to step away so that healing can happen on all levels, right? I want to let the audience know how they can look you up on social media or your website, give them social media handles, give them website, how people can find you. Yeah, sure. So my website is uh, jodianlaw.com and it's Jody with an I and Anne with an E. Mm -hmm. com. And then I've got a Facebook page with the same with the same name and an Instagram account with the same name. So it's all it's all me. All is one word. OK. Yeah. Good. And then and on my um, website, I've got, you know, give me a call, free 30 minute consultation. We can get on and, and have a chat and see if we can work together, if that's something you want to do or even just even just for a chat. It would be great to have us have a have a word with you. And uh, see if I can help and inspire, or you can help and inspire me. It's all, all around, you know, we, we can all help each other. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, it is. I want to thank you so much, Jody, for coming on the show. I really appreciate you being here and sharing your courageous story. And, and congratulations again to all the wonderful healing that you've done, all the people that you're supporting. Thank you so much. And thank you, Cornelia, for having me. Really enjoyed well, it. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest today is Simon Cardinal, uh, who is a Canadian who currently lives in Ottawa, Ontario. He was a member of the Canadian Armed Forces for a little over 26 years, uh, starting as an infantryman and then becoming an aircraft structure technician. Think auto body for airplanes and eventually becoming an inst in institutional leader when he was promoted into the trade of aircraft maintenance superintendent. Simon has completed many formal leadership military training courses. And in 2021, he completed a master of the arts leadership degree from Royal Roads University, where he is where he found his desire to help emerging leaders create strong foundations as they embarked on their leadership journeys. Simon retired from the regular forces in the Canadian Armed Forces so that he could follow his passion of being a private pilot, riding his motorcycle, running and being the host of his acclaimed leadership themed podcast, Trench Leadership, a podcast 
From the Front, a show for emerging leaders across all professions, Trench Leadership aims to offer advice, inspiration, and practical tools as they lead from the trenches. Welcome to the show today, Simon. Well, thank you very much for having me here. It's a real pleasure to be here and, and quite the honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We were talking before you came live, like what is it that you really wanted to highlight and share with the audience today? And you said... Well, what I was talking about was the need for community, the the value that it brings, especially where we find ourselves in a lot of the political climates. And I promise this is not a political conversation I'm, I'm going towards, but a political climate where there seems to be more a lot more division versus unity and collaboration. So how do you make that practical since that is obviously the way it is out there? How do you... How do you make that practical? Because you have to have willing participants uh, that that want to sit down and hear each other's point of view. Well, that, that's a great question and something I really struggled with in the beginning because I didn't know how I would bring people together be, because quite often any type of conversation revolving around uh, a person's inner emotions can be quite divisive in itself. It, it's a lot of people are afraid to speak about that. And I understand that for sure in my military career where I started as a combat arms in the infantry and you just don't talk about feelings. If you did, you were considered weak. And how do we go with that? And I was very fortunate that throughout my career, I, I, I like to think I matured. And when I got into the master's degree, it, it really opened my mind and my eyes to other ways of thinking. And most importantly, what I realized was just because I don't agree with someone else, doesn't make me or the other person wrong. And I love to say dot, 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 and that's okay. It's okay if we disagree with each other. And so from a practical perspective, how I start a conversation is I'll say very likely upfront, we are very likely not going to agree with each other and that's okay. All I'm asking is that we both go into the conversation or the group goes into a conversation with an open mind to understand that if there are differences, it doesn't necessarily mean we're wrong. And often, People that are more open to those types of mindsets or ways of thinking will be open to the dialogue and we can start moving forward. The other practical way I, I do this is by reminding people that there is no such thing as a quick fix to pretty much anything. It takes patience, perseverance, and dedication to go in the whatever direction all of us wants to go, even if it's not the same direction. Yeah, you do, you know, again, you have to be willing to, you know, it's just even like between when you have a relationship at home between a man and a woman, um, if there's a fight or their feelings get triggered, if some, an emotion from the past, something is triggered, and you need to release old feelings that are coming up to the surface to be released. And uh, again, you have to have uh, willing participants that are there to want to have a conversation with you so that we can uh, see and, and nurture the relationship. I think that that's the big piece with being able to uh, want to have an intention of that. Yeah, I, I would like to understand, help me understand. I may not agree with you. I may not, you know, we may not be on the same page, but do help me understand your point of view without coming from the place of being so charged, so triggered up that you put up a wall or you become so defensive that, you know, just drop the, the relationship and, or put projections on each other. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And, and when I'm having difficult conversations or when I'm, when I'm speaking to one-on-one -on -one or in a group and I, I, I have the, one of the questions I'm asking myself when I'm facilitating these types of questions or these types of sessions rather is is the person trying to change my mind or do I get the impression that they're trying to change my mind? And if so, where are we going with that? Because more often than not, that's where my experience has been, that that's where the anger or the defensiveness will, will come off is if it seems like I'm not changing their mind or they're not changing my mind, we're not going to get anywhere. Or it's much more difficult to get it to progress. So what I, I'll physically ask myself that question and quite often I'll write it down in my notes in big yeah. bolded letters to remind myself to ask myself that question. And if we're not going in that direction, I'll pause and say, Hey, let's, let's reset. And let's, let's make sure we're thinking about, we're both thinking about the way we want to go in this. Uh, it, it's, it's honestly, it's a lot about checking our assumptions on what we're hearing and what we're seeing and thinking and feeling and, and making sure where it's accurate. 
Yeah, I think, you know, an, another thing that really helped me in this last past year is I created like a, a living document uh, of basically, I was really examining on issues that were important to me in the world and where I stood on those issues, where, you know, where I stand, making it available to me only, not for anybody else, so that I know, so that when I have uh, discussions with people that I, I, that I know where I personally stand, and that I can be in that without needing to defend it or whatever, or push it on someone else or anything like that, because this is where I am, these are my boundaries, this is what it is. And um, it just brought a lot of peace to myself, uh, you know, doing that. And then when I meet other people and they share their opinions or whatever, then I can just have an open space because I've already offered myself the space of listening to my the things that are important to me. Absolutely. And, and there's a lot of vulnerability in putting ourselves out there and being open to other ideas, especially if it appears to be a polar opposite to what we think and feel about whatever the topic may be. We, and there are many, many examples about that. And, and it was very difficult for me in the beginning to be vulnerable like that. And I still struggle with that depending on the mood I'm in when I'm going into a conversation. And I think that's human nature to recognize that. Uh, what I would recommend for folks would be to recognize the feelings you're having about something. It could be completely unrelated to whatever the topic is going to be. Yeah. But we're inevitably going to take that with us wherever we go because it's inside of us. So so recognizing it and knowing where to go with that is helpful. Yeah, and even acknowledging to yourself that, yeah, I, this is requiring me to be vulnerable. Having that awareness itself, that's that's it. And that's that's a big piece of it. I, I love that piece. I love that you brought vulnerability up and into this conversation. And I also want to say, too, I loved the questions that you ask yourself, sometimes what you have to write down in big, bold letters to yourself, like, what is really the thing here that is, it is that um, what's underneath there um, that I'm feeling threatened by or what it is. So I think that's just really a wonderful way to be, these are practical ways, self-aware and uh, you know, it is about, you said this earlier about community. How can we come together in community and, 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 and communicate with each other um, and bring unity instead of division? Yeah. You know, it's, that's a great question and, and an answer that I, I don't, I haven't even fully figured out how to respond yet because it really depends. My experience has been, it really depends on the situation, the conversation we're about to go into everyone's mindsets. But one thing that one constant I've experienced is that the person receiving the information, receiving the communication has to be willing to hear it in, in an active listening format. And I'm a huge proponent for active listening. And if I could just for one second, talk about that active listening for me is about understanding it, or sorry, it's a, it's about not preparing your opinion or your answer while the person is talking. If they're still talking, they're still getting their thought out there. So how can we follow it fully prepared? Be present in the moment. And I promise everyone that will open everyone's minds and dot, dot, dot. It's okay if we don't agree with each other. And that my experience has been once we are open to hearing each other is how we're able to start building those communities, which builds trust. At the end of the day, communities are about trust. And if we can be open and hear each other, even if we don't agree, we will build trust for each other. I'm so glad you're out there doing this work, uh, educating people on it, you know, speaking about it, because it is about, you know, education here. We need a higher level, uh, you know, we need a deeper level. And so you're doing that. I think that's wonderful. I had a, a person on on podcast recently. You would, you would love him. His name is uh, Jason Tuttle. And one of the things that he was talking about reminded me of what you're saying. Uh, he was talking about uh, to his quote is listen to listen, not listen to respond. Oh listen God. to listen, listen to listen, not listen to respond. Oh. I wrote it down. I thought that was so brilliant. I now I wrote yours down. Uh, be an active listener. Oh, thanks so much. And I'm definitely writing that down. Uh, the, uh, Jason Tuttle's quote there. Uh, that's listen, to, that's listen to listen, not listen to respond. Because That's it's exactly what you said. 
as soon as people, when somebody else is talking, the person is sitting there already thinking about how they're going to reply, what they're going to say and whatever, instead of listening just to listen. We can, we can listen to listen and be active listeners and let it land. Exactly. Exactly. And often we, where we think a conversation is starting or a particular portion is starting more often than not, it goes in a different direction. We just haven't gotten there yet. So let's get to that point. Yeah. We all need to be, we all need to be better um, at doing that. I, one, one year, I can't remember what years it was, maybe 22 or 23. I, my theme for the year is I wanted to be a better listener. And when I told, you know, certain close friends of mine that I'm this, this year, my theme is I'm going to be a better listener. And they're saying to me, Cornelia, you know, what are you talking about? You already uh, do that very well. You're already a really good listener. And I said, no, I want to take it on a deeper level. Uh, really, really listening, uh, really being quiet and uh, listening to people. And it, it, it was a wonderful practice. And maybe I'll do that again. I love it. I'm I'm still worth struggling with it myself. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a practice. It's a practice. Simon, give us your social media handles and your website, please. And so your folks, you, absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to do this. So, folks, if anyone wants to reach out to me, feel free to go to trenchleadership.ca. Uh, my podcast, Trench Leadership, a podcast from the front, is available wherever you listen to your podcasts. It's a real pleasure. I'm on Instagram as Trench Leadership One. Uh, I'm Facebook. It's I have a trench leadership page, page there as well, but pr mostly I use LinkedIn for that. Again, same thing. Just look up trench leadership, a podcast from the front, or ping me at Simon Cardinal. I'm the only cardinal spelled like that in the system. It's perfect. I like it, Cardinal Simon Cardinal. I like that, and uh, we should become friends on on um, LinkedIn as well. So let's yeah. let's make sure that we do that. Uh, Simon, I want to thank you so much for coming on, and thank you for the the work that you're doing out there. Appreciate you. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and tuning into the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Our next guest is from Australia. She is here and she is early uh, in the future tomorrow morning for us. So uh, it's six o'clock over there um, in Australia. Dr. Eileen Ismail. Uh, she's a functional med medical doctor and fatigue decoder specializing in supporting busy and ambitious women aged between the ages of 20 and 50s experiencing fatigue, body aches, and brain fog. This year, she's on a mission to help women who suspect their thyroid as the root cause of their symptoms, but struggle to get confirmation from conventional doctors. With over 15 years of experience, Dr. Uh, Eilina understands the challenges of navigating these symptoms and is committed to helping women reclaim their vitality. Her personalized approach as a functional medicine doctor has empowered countless of women to uncover the root causes of their symptoms and take control of their health journey. Welcome to the show today, Dr. Eileen. Thanks, Cornelia. Thanks for having me. It's actually 7.30 here in the morning. 7.30. Okay. Yes, that's it's 7.30. Well, I'm so glad that you're here early. Thank you so much. So mm -hmm. you were sh sharing before we came live what you wanted to inspire the audience with today. What's your message? I think that first of all, um, how I got into functional medicine, just a bit on that is that I still do conventional medicine. I still think conventional medicine has a place. If you get an accident, you break your bones. If you have a heart attack, you still need drugs, right? Yeah. But um, con that's okay with acute things and not you're going to die. But then there are chronic illnesses, conditions that sometimes what conventional medicine does is just puts a pill for an ill, right? And we're kind of patching the problem without addressing the root cause. So that's where functional medicine comes in. And that's how I started. I've got three kids, um, two kids on the spectrum. The middle one is neurotypical, but he's got the middle child syndrome. So he's the one <laughs> that gives me the most grief. But having two kids on the spectrum like gave me a lot of perspective on how we learn. We just assume kids learn by just mimicking what other people say, they do, uh, just from what they hear. But for kids on the spectrum, 
And me coming from a conventional background, we never learn about autism much in lectures in those days, which makes me sound old. But yeah, in the 90s, uh, it was there wasn't much talk about autism. So I had to do my own research. And what I found was, yes, conventional was good in diagnosing. Um, then if she couldn't speak, we sent her to a speechy. Then my son, he, he wasn't uh, like writing properly, we'd send her to a occupational therapist, but that was it. You know, um, so I then delve into functional and then looking at root causes of what the spectrum can be due to. And it's multifactorial, could be your genes, could be your environmental toxins, could be um, your nutrition, um, how stressed the mom was when she was pregnant, um, toxins like heavy metals, you know. Um, there's amalgams feelings in you know, silver mercury feelings in um, your teeth, right? That's all huge. And we never really explored it conventionally. So that's what I went into. And then I started seeing the moms of these kids and they would present with fatigue, you know, they're already stressed trying to cope with the kids on the spectrum. And then, then that's how it led to fatigue, body aches and brain fog. And now the most common thing I find is the thyroid and autoimmune disease. Um, it's it's like climbing there up there in terms of causes of Ill, chronic illnesses and autoimmune diseases that we know of now is about 100 plus in the world. Mm -hmm. Some we can test antibodies for, like Hashimoto's, like Graves, like rheumatoid arthritis, like type 1 diabetes. Some we can't. It's like MS, multiple sclerosis, vitiligo, psoriasis. So the unfortunate statistic at the moment, um, and it might climb up, is one in four women are known to get an autoimmune disease in their lifetime. And just picking the one. Um, and can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. So when when you're talking about the thyroid, uh, yeah. when you're talking about the thyroid, we're talking about stress. We're talking yeah. about autoimmune disease. Yeah. You know, we're talking about that. And um, you earlier said um, there is a place for conventional medicine. You know what? What you know when you need when you need to get an X ray, uh, various yeah. things. You need medicine. Um, but mainly what they do is they give you a pill for an ill. So the ill might be uh, the thyroid, the ill might be uh, psoriasis. Um, how would you go about reverse helping with that? The ill might be the thyroid, but the thyroid wasn't the initial problem. Like it wasn't the thyroid to blame in the first place. If your immune system is all wrapped up, for whatever reason and oh. then it starts attacking the thyroid and this is what causes Hashimoto's and then the thyroid starts to not function well so that's and then oh that's when we give thyroid replacement therapy because now yeah. the thyroid is not functioning well right but right. we don't look at oh maybe there's a chance that if we help the thyroid along address of what's attacking the thyroid then maybe one day you can reduce the thyroid replacement and your thyroid can function again yeah, but no. yeah, yeah yeah but if you don't address the root causes then it the immune system it, like it could be other causes right i'm just giving an example of what can cause the thyroid yeah i want to ask um about psoriasis if okay. it's so right reason wise i have a person in my community right now that is struggling with that um psoriasis so psoriasis may not be the root problem that is just something right yeah it's like the the condition right or the diagnosis yeah. the symptoms yeah, yeah. so and, it might be psoriasis might be something else um yep and it is an autoimmune disease like the immune system is attacking the cells of the skin we just don't know how to measure we don't have the technology yet to know what antibodies are attacking but there are things we can do um one of it is the skin reflects your inner skin so your outer skin the largest organ in your body reflects your inner skin which is your gut um lining right so looking at the gut is huge because we know that 
um, if anything were to get into our body, it's what we stuff into our mouth, right? Into our gut. Um, and the gut's huge. It's from your mouth to your anus. I call it from your uh, gums to your bum. And I mean, if you cut your skin, yes, bugs can get in. If you inhale in foreign body, things can get in through your respiratory system, but it's so rare. And what happens is the body's not stupid. It develops two um, defense mechanism. And the second defense mechanism is two thirds of your immune system sits in your gut wall. So that's the connection of how the immune system then, um, I'll go back one step. So the first, the first defense mechanism is your one cell layer of your gut wall. It's very thin, it's microscopic, but it's got this tight glue these tight junctions um, that actually um, keep the cells together. But there's certain foods, gluten, dairy, that break down this glue. And then what happens is all this stuff get into your body, your immune system, two thirds of your army sitting in your gut starts to get wrapped up. It's attacking gluten and dairy, for example, because its enemy turns around, looks at your skin and says, the skin looks a bit like gluten because now it's got this thing called molecular mimicry. It's like, so that's why your immune system now, now doesn't recognize your skin as its own and it starts attacking it. Oh, and then the psoriasis happens. Yeah. From there. yeah, this is fascinating the way that you're explaining this. My goodness, I, I love that you're focusing, that you're educating women out there, helping women with, you know, these um to go deeper to the root cause of what what these things are and that how you know they might be diagnosed with one thing but like it 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 might be something coming from a completely different place so it's an important piece i want to let the audience know we should have you back on in the future where we can do a sure. longer show if you don't yeah. mind yeah. um and then you can just really you know we we can talk longer and you can really go into it um so we'll we'll have ashley schedule that for us if you're up to it oh. um yeah, I just like to advocate, you know, you got to advocate for your own body, like for your own health and, you know, learn as much as you can and then go back to your practitioner and then I can like, you know, what questions you can ask your practitioner um, to look at. Yeah, it's good. Let's tell the audience how they can find you on social media, where where you are at, your handles and maybe your website. I'm um, easily on Instagram most of the time, um, dr for doctor underscore my name, Ailina, A-I-L-I-N-A. There's lots of free resources. Um, there's a quiz that you can take. It only lasts for five minutes and it decodes the root cause uh, of your fatigue um, in terms of gut health, thyroid health, hormone, other hormone health. So that could be a good way to start. And then I you can just book a call and we can discuss things. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, so many um, people are, are dealing with the gut, gut issues, yeah. gut health you know? Um, so it's really good that you're out here educating us. Eileen, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank and you for having um, me. yeah, and then we'll um, check in with you again in the future sometime. No worries. But make sure all this, this is all information that then, you know, go discuss with your practitioner. That's oh, yeah. yeah, that we, we, yeah, you're, you're giving us the information to um, empower ourselves so that we can have a conversation with our doctor or practitioner. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. No We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Everyone we will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Our next guest is Lois Hissel. She has been a registered nurse for over 40 years, and she's been uh, intuitive in providing care that her patients needed. She just didn't know how she knew that. She started to realize that uh, she had other gifts approximately six years ago. She started using oracle cards to divine information, and she was drawn to the Akashic Records for an unknown reason. She studied them and learned how to access and use them in her everyday life, and she has been doing readings and healings to help people heal the past and align the future to their highest good. This is her true passion. Her tools that she uses is the Akashic Records, oracle cards, 
clairsentience, clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairaudience, Reiki energy, Arcturian healings, crystals, med meditation, chakra balancing work, and shadow work. Welcome to the show today, Lois. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's great to have you. And we also have a little guest with us, and that is your grandson. Yep, he's here. Um, kind of unexpectedly, but yeah, here he is. Yeah, here he is, and he seems to be enjoying it. So uh, let's talk about the Akashic Records. Sure. Uh, tell the audience what the Akashic Records is and are. So short and sweet, the Akashic Records are like Google on steroids. Mm. But what they are is a quantum database of your soul's every thought, <laughs> action, or deed from the time of its inception until this very moment in time. And of course, time's only linear on this side. So we can, <laughs> we can get all kinds of information. No subject is off limits. Yes. Past lives. Um, sometimes even what's more, what's, what should I be doing to be more in alignment with what my soul wants? So it could even be that. Yes. So how do people, um, do you do Zoom readings? Is that how you work? You do Zoom readings? For the most part, yeah. I'll do Zoom readings. If, um, if people want a reading with me and they're not close, I'll, we'll do them via Zoom <laughs> or via um, Google Meets, depending. Uh, the other way is that I do Spirit Fest in the state of Florida. So depending on the weekend, you might find me at, well, I won't say you might find me at Spirit Fest. You will find me at Spirit Fest. Uh, and I love to do readings and I love to work with the people and meet as many people as I can. And my husband goes along with me and it's it's just fun for us. We have a really good time. You know, your spiritual gifts, the Claire Cognizance, the Claire audience, all of those gifts, yeah. um, were, was that all just ripe and ready for you waiting, like for you to embrace it again? When It was not. No, it was something that I really had to work at. Okay. I really had to study. And I will tell you, I have the best mentor in the entire world. She was just fabulous. Ah! Fabulous. If she would have said, Lois, go to outside and run around your house three times to the left and three times to the right every day, I would have done it because that's what she told me to do. So I kind of followed her blindly and whatever she told me to do, I did. And as I did that, and as I just <coughs> didn't have any expectation, things started to open up very, I won't say quickly because it was a process, but they, they did open up. What, um, what, where's your mentor now? Oh, she's still there. I still, I still reach out to her every now and then. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's still teaching people the Akash and, um, <laughs> light, light language and all kinds of things. She's wonderful. Amy Robeson is her name. She's amazing. So what is it that attracted you to when you heard the words Akashic records? Oh, I had no idea. I just knew I had to be in that class. Mm. I didn't know what they were. I didn't understand how they worked. I don't know why I was called to be there, but I was called to be there. So there I was. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about shadow work. So shadow work, everybody thinks that it's really bad and it's using the dark side and stuff. That's not it at all. What shadow work is, you know, sometimes you have <laughs> stuff that happens in your life and you go, oh, I'm going to deal with that later. You just kind of shove it under the rug. Well, shadow work is taking all that junk that you shoved under the rug and dealing with it and addressing it and healing it so that you can move forward. I think since I've been doing this show since 2017 mm -hmm. and I've had, I don't know how many, how many shows we've done, maybe over 300, but this is the first time we've ever had um, someone as bright and as enthusiastic like Vincent is we've never had a baby on the show you're the first yeah new ground ha have you done a read uh, an Akashic reading on Vincent no now some people will read children um I was taught that you don't read anybody under the age of 18 so I don't now that's not to say that 
if I get something from him, and occasionally I do, um, I can explore it that way, but I will not open his records because he's not of age. That's really beautiful because uh, people have to give you permission. Correct. Absolutely. You have to. And, and the thing is, once you give me your permission, it's only for that session. It's not a lifelong. Lois can go into my records anytime she wants. It doesn't work that way. At least that's not the way I practice. Other people may practice differently. But yeah. the way I practice is you give me permission for that session. Yeah. And then yeah, I, I think the records before the session's over as well. Yeah, I think that's a big piece, you know, and to have that integrity and, you know, it, it, it's uh, lawful, you know, uh, it's it's like a spiritual law to Correct. practice this and um, follow that integrity. Correct. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So just, what is it that you love most about the work that you're doing? What I love most about it is that I just never know what's going to happen. Mm. I never know, especially during a healing, I never know where we're going to wind up. Mm -hmm. Where I think we're going to go is generally not where we end up. I may think we're going to the cosmos and we don't go there. We go to a different plane. So mm -hmm. it's, I just like the not knowing what's going to happen. I like the, um, I like the relationship that I have with my clients. And even if I only read them once, it doesn't matter. I still have a really good relationship with them. Yeah, that's really fun. What are your favorite Oracle card decks? Oh gosh, I have- Top three, top three. Oh, top three? Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, of course it would have to be, there's a dragon Oracle that I have. I'm trying to think who, I'm not even sure who does it. It might be Kyle Gray, but Kyle Gray is one of mine. I like his, um, I like his decks. I like, um, I have an Akashic Tarot deck. Nice. That's one of my favorites. Okay. And um, the Oracle of the Fairies. I like oh. the Fairy Oracle as well. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. I want to let the audience know how they can find you, what your social media links are and what your website is, if you have one. Sure. Um, easy, easiest way to find me is on my website and that that address is www.loishissa.com um, so you, you can find me on facebook that way as well just lois hissa just type in my name good well lois i think what i'm seeing in your future is your own oracle card deck that you'll be designing and creating maybe maybe right. yeah yeah i want to thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing uh this beautiful story with us today your gifts sharing your gifts and also little vincent nice to meet you both i want to thank you so much i want to thank the audience for listening and tuning in and we'll see everyone again next time take good care thanks so much Cornelia. great to meet you thank you You've been listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.